Hey guys, welcome back to the Work From Home Center. In this new series, I am going to work on recreating some of our favorite fast food items, but making them a tad bit healthier from home, from scratch, and I'm gonna say maybe even better. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and take your chicken breast. So Chick-fil-A uses chicken breasts. You could also use chicken thighs here, which would actually add a little bit more, a little bit more moisture. Now we're gonna take our chicken breasts, we're gonna put them into a Ziploc bag and we are going to smash them. <laughs> we're gonna take a rolling pin or if you have a meat tenderizer, you're gonna go ahead and smack them and flatten them and try to make them as even as possible in size. Once you've achieved that, you're gonna go ahead and slice them in half and you're going to add some pickle juice in there. So pickle juice is an awesome flavoring and it is what people say they use for Chick-fil-A, but Chick-fil-A has actually um, said that they don't use pickle juice. They use sort of a brine, but pickle juice is a really good substitute and it's something that is really easy for everyone to have access to and to use. So I'm just using some pickles that I canned earlier this year and I'm just saving the pickles for later to throw on the sandwich. Once you do that, make sure you seal it up, take out as much air as you can, shake it up, and then you're gonna wanna ha go ahead and put it into the fridge and let it sit for at least 30 minutes. I need four hours. If you can do overnight, even better. Now we're gonna go ahead and make the brioche buns. So I used a yeast bun. I didn't think I had enough for making sourdough uh, bri brioche buns, but that's fine. Um, so you're just gonna put the yeast, butter, eggs, milk, and um, mix that up together. Um, and then we're gonna add in the flour. And don't worry guys, I will put all of the recipe instructions in the um, footnotes below so you guys don't have to make sure you're you know, taking out any notes for the recipes or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and whisk that up. And then you're gonna put in the flour and mix that in the KitchenAid as well. And we're gonna let that rise for about an hour or so. And then we are going to make that into little buns. So the recipe I used said that you should make about eight buns. I think they gave the grams, but I did not measure it. I ended up doing about seven um, to make full size buns, which I thought were pretty big. Eight would have been perfect. The, the eight or the seven was just a little bit too big. So um, then you're gonna set those aside to rise and we're gonna make our Chick-fil-A sauce. Now this is not the um, exact Chick-fil-A sauce. Exact Chick-fil-A sauce calls for um, barbecue sauce, but I don't carry barbecue sauce in my fridge. We don't really like barbecue sauce that much, don't hate. Um, so I made something pretty close, but if you want an exact recipe, you can always find those online and using the barbecue sauce. Um, but I'm just making a homemade mayo here. So, you know, your typical eggs, vinegar, lemon juice, mustard powder, mustard um, seeds, which I used seeds here, and then um, a little bit of uh, avocado oil. I'm gonna go ahead and blend that up, and then after I blended it, I um, took away half because my husband doesn't like Chick Fil A sauce, so I just had mayo for his sandwich, and then I added a bunch of honey to this as well, and that really gave it that kind of mustard honey flavor. If you have like liquid smoke, I think that would be pretty good here too. If you didn't have barbecue sauce, but you had that, it would kind of give it that like umami flavor. Now, this is what the buns are gonna look like after you let them rise, and then you wanna throw them in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. I did 16, I thought that was a little bit too long. I also forgot the egg wash, you know, happens. Um, so they are a little bit more brown than I would have liked, but they still tasted amazing. I put a little bit of butter on them just to kind of help coat them. And now we're gonna do our flour dredge. Now you're gonna want about two to three cups of flour. I did three, but I actually thought two would have been just fine. And you're gonna put in your seasonings. Now you can definitely do whatever you like here. I did paprika, garlic, salt, pepper, and a little bit of mustard powder as well. And then I just mix it up, so made sure that all everything was really blended really well. And then I went ahead and made my egg wash. So the egg wash is gonna be a little bit of milk, a little bit of eggs, and you're gonna mix that all together to make sure that it's well incorporated. And what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna take our chicken that we've flattened, so we'll take it out of the fridge at this point, and we're gonna put the chicken in the egg wash first, and then we're gonna put it into the flour dredge. Now, when you put it into 
the flour dredge, you want to make sure that you are really pushing in the flour into the chicken. This is gonna make sure that it's really coated. So put pressure on it. Don't be afraid to kind of really squish it in there. Um, this is not the time to be gentle at all. Um, we wanna make sure it's really well incorporated. And then you can go ahead, once you have it all nicely put on there, you can go ahead and put it onto a baking sheet um, until you are ready to start frying. I really recommend kind of having all of these things done um, you know, while you're working through it so that you're not kind of trying to chase the oil or anything like that so once that's done and you have your oil at about 350 degrees which i would probably start to do heat it up while you're doing your chicken um, then you can put it into your uh, put the chicken into your oil now i didn't have a thermometer so my first ones were actually a little bit too hot but it really improved the more that I did. And that's just, that's learning, right? Like we're not gonna be perfect. And so I plated it up, you guys. It was so good and we will for sure do these again. So if you thought this was helpful, drop me a comment below. What was your favorite part? What do you want me to make next? I love recreating things. So let's chat soon, like, comment, and subscribe.